Welcome to the 100 Master Coaches series featuring Master Coaches from around the world. Let's journey together on this 100 Master Coaches series with your host, Coach Mel, MCC. Christoph Fl is an ICF Master Certified Coach, Clinical Hypnotherapist, Clinical Supervisor, and Founder of the Three Brains Theory. He is a visiting professor at the IE Business School and the author of the books, Relationships? Which Brain is Talking? and how men and women fit, finally understand your partner with the three brains theory. Now onto the show. Hello, hello, and welcome to the 100 Master Coaches show. Today, special guest all the way from Netherlands. He is none other than Christoffel Schneiders. So welcome to the show, my friend. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mel. I, I, I love your pronunciation. <laughs> The, 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 the effort oh, you take you. to pronounce it correctly, as I said, oh. in Dutch, this is really a Dutch last name, and it is only for Dutch almost to pronounce it correctly. So, wow. Well, thank you so much. And I'm really grateful to be in your show. And I'm grateful that you're here because, today, um, Christoffel, um, in all fashion coaching style, right? Where would you like to begin today? <laughs> where would I like to begin today now? Mm. What I like to start is say where we'd like to do is actually to give really valuable to our to your listeners, to our listeners yeah. about say yeah. you're an extremely experienced MCC. I'm an MCC. We have a lot of coaching years behind us. That's right. Uh, how can we contribute to the coaching society and other people who listen? Yeah. Which besides the fun we have, also the knowledge we gained in all those years. Oh yeah. And so yeah. that will be where I like to talk about. Wonderful. And then, you know, like the song goes in The Sound of Music, let's start at the very beginning. <laughs> it's a very good place to start. <laughs> so, Absolutely. Julie, Robert, mm. Ju Julie, Julia, Julia. <laughs> Julie Andrews. There we go. <laughs> you see, we help each other right away to find the answers. So how did it begin? Mm. I I'm going to disclose almost my age visit because in 97, <laughs> that's 26 years ago, I joined yeah. a training company in Europe, mm. in the Netherlands. They're in Europe's number one, really top-notch quality, really number one, wow. far from all, uh, most in leadership and sales training. Mm. And coaching was a part of it, but wow. less are done because it, it, it delivers less revenue. Yes. And I still remember how my coaching started become because the first year I was struggling. I'm say, um, I will not say the invent terrible, as they say it in French, but say, I don't always fit in all the uh, custom-made suits. <laughs> I like to also have, give your own idea about it. That's good. So the, year, the first year I was struggling with leadership and sales training, at least to fit in the company culture. And mm -hmm. then we start to learn coaching. And we were coaching uh, colleagues. And uh, at one moment, the CEO is sitting there and a really senior uh, consultant. And me and, 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 and let's say the other uh, newbie are doing a coaching session. And the newbie mm. started half year uh, longer in the company. He's totally enthusiastic about the coaching. So I think what's happening. <laughs> and even those two guys who were always banging on me the last year from, you're not doing good, you're not doing good, you don't fit, say, you did actually a really good job. Wow, you have a talent for this. And I'm looking at all three of them and think from, are you pulling my leg or something? <laughs> what's the whole going year on? I hear actually from fit in, <laughs> yeah, fit in the culture, fit happening. And so I was really thinking from what's happening. And probably I will hear now after this, this, I will get probably, again, a slap. <laughs> I know they stayed enthusiastic, so I thought, okay, mm -hmm. so maybe it's really true. So I, then on that moment, I still remember it, and said, what did I do that was so good? Because <laughs> <laughs> I really didn't know what was so good about my coaching. Yeah. And then the, 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 the guy coach said, you know, you have a feeling actually what's really happening underneath. I said, so I say the words, but you have that insight what's happening underneath. So your question is actually not only what I say, Mm. That's actually also what's happening inside me. Was how did I even put words on it? Yeah. And I look at him and said, how did I do that? I said, I don't know. You did it. <laughs> so we had, we had a laugh about it. But also one of the, the one of the senior managers said, Chris, yes, how do you actually do that? And I said, I don't know. I, ju I just really, I would say, connect with the guy and it comes up. Mm. And that little spark, the guy said, you connect with the guy. Wow. That's it. Yes, you're extremely good in that part, in really connecting mm. with somebody. I said, okay. Now, so that's how it started, my coaching. I said, uh, because actually, if I came aware, hey, 
I'm good at something and they like it. Okay, I don't get a slap for this. This is a good one. And, and you that's know, that's... I stayed with a company for nine... For, for nine? For nine years, did you say? Yeah, I stayed, I stayed with the company for nine years. Left wow. there also as one of the senior partners. Because hey, after that, I thought, hey, you find your strengths back again. Yeah, you, you still start fitting in. You come over, hey, these are my talents. This can I use. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's how, how it started. Mm. You know, when you're saying that, what came to my mind was how often in the workplace where we hear feedback, right? Not so good one. And then suddenly we hear some good ones, right? <laughs> and the good thing is you took the good ones and like, at least I'm good at something. <laughs> now, finally, let's work on that, right? Let's work yeah. on that, yeah. focus on that. But but often, right, in, in organizations, especially those days where, where, where they are just really good at giving you this bad stuff every day, right? They just whack it on you. Yeah. But it, it's just amazing to hear that that made you... Um, want to stay because you, you had some affirmation about your, your belief with yourself on you know on your abilities yeah. and kind of gave you that that I don't know spark the impetus to kind of stay for for that amount of years so just want to bring that into the forefront of our conversation now and how important that positive feedback it is right in that loop right when when we're in organizations and maybe you have some thoughts on that um, and how you've experienced well, it, that it, before. And it's beautiful that you that you also take it out. Of course, it's true, eh? but what we teach also our clients or work with our yeah. clients or and coach yeah. them on. And positive feedback is so important. And I know, say, eh, all the banging I got was to get me actually in their quality system on the right level. And if you like to yeah. play for the, sure. the number one team, you have to yeah. show number one behavior. And so it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, but it is so true. But also, when you when you give positive feedback, that at least that you give them personal quality. From hey, does this fit in the company, and how can we actually cherish that mm. more? Mm. So that the interesting thing is when we I don't know how it's with you when you coach people. Someone doing coaching also I always ask them, hey, especially when we have a normal chat with the client, from yeah. you know, what are you really good at? What do you really like in the company? How do they appreciate you? That's that. Yeah. And then it's always interesting to hear and sometimes sad to hear what people then respond back to and how mm. much positive feedback they actually got. And I don't know how it's with you, but in, you know, the Gottman Institute is about relationships. That's right. They made once the equation, uh, they have positive uh, reinforcement, uh, reinforcements and negative reinforcement. Yeah. And to see in healthy relationship, it's a quote of five to one, five yes. positives, one negative. Yes. Actually that that's, that equation is almost the same also in companies. Yeah. You good. just go into a team in a company and, you, and you're going to hear how many positive things to say to each other and how many say negative things. And you almost can put your finger right away on how long the team or the company actually will survive. Absolutely. Good point there. And it's a very mm -hmm. tricky one, isn't it? In a world of <laughs> wanting to uh, stay in the middle the inclusivity and then yeah. appreciating diversity, all of that and how important that is today. There is also a need to speak the truth, isn't it? And I yeah. guess sometimes speaking the truth has its pros and cons. And sometimes if you speak it too strongly, it may seem like you are giving too much of a real feedback to people and there will be some pushback. So I don't know whether you, you've experienced that through your years. I'm just wondering. Uh, yes, we, yeah, I start laughing, as you could see. I'm Dutch. And <laughs> the Dutch are famous for a couple of things. One of them is, we could say, their directness. Yeah, what other people see as rude. <laughs> we call it actually being honest. Honest. Yeah. In, the old Dutch, in the Dutch old culture, we were fighting war and those kind of things. You did not yeah. have time to, <laughs> to put a lot of politeness in your things. If the dike is breaking, you're not going to say, hey, by the way, and now water is up to my throat. <laughs> Could you be so kind, please, if it's if it really suits it you to help me you. out? On that moment, you're drowned. We Dutch are famous for, say, our directness. So when I emigrated to Australia, mm. but it's also direct, I came aware that you have direct, you have Dutch direct. And that's always... <laughs> and when you're in Spain, you have, say, really politeness. Because the, the directness of a Dutch person in Spain is almost giving them a heart attack. 
Yeah. It is there so in, in, in feedback, oh, giving okay. feedback, one for mm. me, it's important also to come aware what kind of culture are you talking in. Yeah, that's true. And the Asian culture is different than Australian culture, as you, as you know, uh, uh, Mel. Uh, having said that, say, bringing honesty is for me when you talk about, say, cultural uh, leadership and uh, it creates trust. Because mm. I know that you speak the truth, even if it's nice or not nice, I know at least what I have. Yeah. when I talk to you. Yeah. And That's in that part, honestly, even if it's not nice, is amazing. But what I come aware in my coaching, uh, yeah, there, now there are two things extremely uh, where I work with leaders, most of them. One is to become more heart-centered. Mm. Yeah, so be a little bit, um, not only about the fact and figures and about yourself, but also now, how do you create a team? It's not only about you. Yeah. And the second part is, that people are more in the opposite and like to have the, relationship and are afraid of rejection yeah. so don't dare to, to actually do the hard talks like uh, realignment uh, making strong decisions because then uh, they feel that they could hurt the relationship yeah and so they take the person and the topic then in in one bowl instead of making hey behavior and person are are two different things yeah. and especially in the second one for them honesty is extremely hard because they can be honest in a positive way right that the, the Look at the average uh, appraisal session at the end of the year. People say, if somebody's not performing, let's write good because then we don't have a hard discussion. <laughs> and then the person after a couple of years has to be fired because of malperformance. Yeah. And, but then the whole dossier is actually not building up in that story because nobody ever dared to tell him the real truth. Yeah. And so in that part, I coach most times people from, you can talk about the be behavior and not about the person. You can those mm. i don't know how you see that but that, that's how i at least look at it yeah, the, the two dominators what i see in people yeah totally agree with you right um often we we say it right now let's separate the problem from the person right and not say that this yeah. is a problematic person which often is the case when you're tired with a certain yeah. colleague yeah. Uh, and then you kind of name we play the name game right this one is difficult that one yeah. is off the rocket you know that one's in a way, it's like putting meaning in how we can uh, handle those meanings as well. Work with them, right? Yeah. So, yeah, it's very true. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm. It's awful. I would love to hear of how you walked into coaching, as in after working for this training company, uh, what, what made you to want to get into, you know, that whole route of uh, certified credentialed and all of that with the icf uh actually when i was in australia <clears throat> i came where that australia likes certifications <laughs> as you know <laughs> yes and so then uh, i still remember a client said, a client said uh, are you icf accredited ah. and my first answer was a really long time ago no okay so i thought okay let's become member because I did all my coaching trainings with the training company. Yeah. They were not ICF certified. So yeah. to get an ICF accreditation means I had to do, say, the whole accreditation path. Now, yes. And that means you have to get all your stuff accredited. And it's, I can tell you, a lot of work. Mm. Besides, you have to do recordings. And so I pushed it a long time in front of me from, <laughs> until, say, my, my, my current girlfriend, she's in the board of ICF Spain, said, Chris, stop pushing it forward and now just become a, just go bite the bullet. You say it to all your clients, bite the bullet. Mm. Put your money where your mouth is. Uh, mm. So that's up. Then I really longed to say for, for, for four or five years ago, this day, I went for my PCC. Of course, that was the easier part than right away MCC, although I already had the hours. Yeah. Because for MCC, right away jump into accreditation part. MCC is really a hard one. So it was PCC, and uh, two years ago, also based on my training on the three brain coaching, yeah. um, one of my participants said, who, who is an MCC, she said, Chris, why don't you become an MCC? Because all your stuff is MCC work, and it makes it, it, makes it much easier. <clears throat> and I said, <clears throat> becoming an MCC means, again, all your recordings, getting, getting through all the <laughs> loopholes, getting ticked all the boxes. And... Uh, and my other training was, was also an MCC, but she's also a mentor. Yeah. And she said, hey, Chris, um, you know, I trust, I believe in you, 
I will be your mentor if you like me. Wow. Uh, wow. Then there was no escaping for me anymore because yeah, if you already have a mentor who says yes. <laughs> so I, I'm still asking, is there an escape for me? Said, no, no, no escape. So, no. so, I, went, so I went also for my PC, MCC path. And, yeah. But I also had the ID. Um, if you're an MCC, you, the, the people look at you differently. So it also it gives another status to the training. Yeah. Um, and I saw, I saw the journey. I thought, you know, uh, because I'm also a therapist. Yeah. I know if you do your MCC recording, you cannot put any NLP therapy yeah. constellations or anything yeah. in your coaching. Of course, then. Yeah. So my, my challenge was that was also I pushed out from okay, but I have to actually yeah. skip all my other things and really be co- only do coaching. Yeah. And I don't know how to do Your clients don't buy you because you're an MCC coach. Your clients buys you because you help him or her to get somewhere. And if you That's do right. NLP therapy, hocus pocus, actually they don't care as long as you get them there. <laughs> uh, so uh, I, I went through the whole thing and I thought, you know, uh, besides all my frustration, I thought this is a beautiful thing also to learn really MCC coaching. So yeah. is it able for me? Am I able to coach and get also results without doing all my other things? So I saw it as that journey. It doesn't mean it was mm. not frustrating because sometimes yeah. then <clears throat> it's not approved. Your mentor says, no, that's not good enough, Chris. Uh, sorry, but you re- again, you flipped into helping the client too much. Don't help the client too much. Yeah, but in my way, it is five minutes. In MCC way, it's 15 minutes. Yes, I just take 15 minutes. <laughs> and all my yes buts didn't help. Yes. <laughs> and so I find it really, I find it really a great, I find it, uh, first of all, it's a really great journey because you come aware. Yeah. yeah. How can you actually, and that was my objective, how can I embed all the qualities I have in a way mm-hmm. that it is done in coaching mm-hmm. and not done, say, in therapy or other kind of tricks? So how can I blend my style in yeah. So it is still approved as, as really MCC coaching. That's right. And the client gets the results also. But you can really can stick to the coaching. And that was my say my wow. my objective. And I can tell you it only took me 50 recordings <laughs> to get that. So, but, so you could say I'm a slow learner, but I thought, no, I really like to get that finger on it because I only work with real clients. Because some yeah. people then say, why don't you just uh, um, take a fake client and you prep the client how you do it? Your recording. Yeah. I said, no, I don't like to do that because then I yeah, don't see my own quality. Um, some people called me stubborn or stupid. <clears throat> I said, no, no, no. I like to honor it. If I become an mm. MCC, I like to become That's an right. MCC because I do MCC quality. Not, be- not, not I because I knew how to trick all the things. Yeah. So when I really got that insight, okay, so you can get that coaching. You can ask those questions in this moment. You use those silences. You you bring it like that. And as, <laughs> and it remembered me actually how we started from. I have the quality to know what's happening without that people tell me what's happening. So I only have to get that, what we call huh, really the relationship with the client, the trust with the client, the connection yeah. with the client. And then somewhere the, the questions will follow and the topic will follow. So in the moment I could blend that all in, yeah. that somewhere happened. And, and the beauty is, and probably you know that, having to figure that out and figure it out, mm-hmm. you can also help other people how to do that yeah and that's the beauty of it because they say that's my still my passion uh, how can we bring that coaching to a higher standard even because it's mm. extremely popular coaching and it is if you read the newspapers more and more needed for all the burnout stress and other kind of related things people have yeah. so how can you bring say those things in there now so that's uh and that's how i became it with all the truth <laughs> there's all the frustrations and also yeah, the yeah, journey I, behind it I, I, and you know that that's all of that that you said is so important you know so important for every person out there to listen to right whether you're coach whether you're not it's okay we're thinking of coming in it's okay yeah. uh there, there's so many things you said there I'm going to paraphrase, of course. You know, uh, there's the bit. There's that... <laughs> if you, if you wouldn't, I would be surprised. <laughs> there's a bit of you being that directness, truth, truth telling Dutch. You know, well, stroke stubborn. Okay, uh, <laughs> you wanted it that way because through the rigor, 
you could still be you and and still find out what it took to to understand all those loops and and ticks and all of that which was important but it's not the whole story and and that lessons insights whatever you got from that tiring journey was all worthwhile because at the end of it you can say i've done it from me and i didn't just do it just because someone's asking me to do it or someone cornered me to do it or someone said this is the right way and you could have done all the other ways too but you said no i gotta live with it i've got to stand on it and i've got to say i did it in a way my way with all the lessons that you have taken and will continuously take with it. And knowing, I think, one of the things I, I heard is that knowing that you put the client's interest first, you know, the, the needs of the client first before saying anything of, of the other stuff that you could do, right? Because you've got the other toolkits, yeah. right? You know, yeah. therapy and NLP yeah. and all the rest, right? You, you could have just put it in there but you also wanted to be true to the sense of if i did it purely with just coaching what would that be like you know so hey congratulations man it really sounded like <laughs> that was tough but it was worth all that while or all that effort <clears throat> absolutely it was it was 15 months and say it was tough but absolutely worth it eh? because mm -hmm. you come over and we talk about now the, the therapy and the coaching way. And mm -hmm. there's, of course, a huge gray area in between. Yeah. And for me, because coaches, uh, they get more and more questions out of the business world uh, to actually to expand the topics they discuss. Yeah. yeah. So, and for me, as also being a therapist and also training coaches, from, can it be done in a way that we can honor ourselves and don't step out of our own roles or, our, or we breach our own contracts or we breach yeah, our own true. things? And can we give the quality to the client in that moment? And mm. the only way, in my opinion, to know it is to do it mm. by yourself. Yeah. So I would not have mind if this process had just took two months or instead of 15. <laughs> hey, but, it took... Took me the about the same time, I saw almost <laughs> two years for that process, and of course, in between, I also chose to uh, to take a sabbatical because I was just tired of getting it not passed. Right? I'm like, you know what? Forget about it. It's not for me. Maybe it's for some really yeah. brilliant people. I'm, I'm... So I took some time, and anyway, that's my story. Yeah. But uh... but 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 that's also good, eh? Because I also took three months off after they. Um, they said no to my, my recordings. I took three months off, you know, from this is the same things, probably it's not for me. Maybe I put the challenge too hard on my own shoulders from, uh, and, and with all the doubts and maybe I'm too much therapist. And, but that's also a beautiful, I don't know, a beautiful reflection on yourself. What kind of beliefs yeah. am I now imposing on myself? Yeah, so true. And yeah. are those beliefs actually helping me or actually limiting me to get there? Yeah. I'm curious about your background as a therapist. Of course, um, know that uh, as a coach, we're not to do that. And, and if, if ever our clients walk into that area or, or need other professional mm -hmm. help, we as coaches have the ethical uh, responsibility to recommend Step them out, forward yeah. Eh? To, yeah. uh, to another professional. Eh? So I think the question is, Christopher, how do you see that both worlds come together? No, that's a good question because I started really working in therapy 11 years ago when I entered Australia as yeah. first being a clinical hypnotherapist, uh, psychotherapist, hypnotherapist. Yeah. Also teaching people to become clinical hyp uh, psychotherapist, hypnotherapist. And I worked a lot with uh, sexual, emotional uh, abuse um, and other kinds of now, depression and horrible stuff. Yeah. So I, yeah. I really came into the harder therapy wor uh, world. That's also how I came aware, hey, Head, head, heart, gut, brain. Yeah. Uh, and when you talk about where's the line with coaches, uh, mm. I totally agree in both cases eh, that there should be a uh, separation. Yeah. A good therapist is not a good coach because they will solve the issue for the client. 
means they give the client almost a fish and the client doesn't learn to uh, doesn't learn fishing. Yeah. But the client doesn't need fishing anymore because he's he's fat, so he doesn't have an issue anymore. Uh, coaches, yeah, we help the client to develop and move it forward in the yeah. future. But both both are not trained mm. to do the other role. And then becomes it really hard. Uh, and psychologist does all respect is not a great coach in general if he doesn't learn really how to become a coach. Uh, and the same for coaches. So there is a gray area based on the topics the client presents to us. Yeah. And for me, it's also the case, uh, how much does the client n- know your expertise, but much more, how, how much do you know your own expertise? Yeah. Uh, daring to say no to a client is extremely important. Yes. And because you can really mess up a client seriously by the way that's true that, 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 yeah, because it is extremely easy to say in my words re-traumatize a client when they have a topic wow or make them even worse yeah if you do the wrong thing it is like asking me to do to do a surgery on somebody mm. i can tell you you will not be happy after the surgery <laughs> um and so so in that part it's there so uh like for me I don't have an issue because the clients who come to me know what I am, what I do. But even then I always discuss what is, where we get, where do we put our own boundaries? Yes. Do you like to see me as a coach? Do you like to see me more wider? Because I like to have clarity in both things. Because if you like to have a coaching process, it's also different than how we do our sessions. If you ask me to be say also more, say let's call it therapy role, then sometimes I give an advice. I say, don't do that or have you thought about left as a coach i will not give you those tools because i like that you come aware of your own process how it works in you because that's also what you like to do somewhere in your workforce yeah, when you talk about those kind of things so we make clear distinctions and i think it's extremely important for us also as a coach as a therapist to, to get those boundaries really straight because the client expects something of course they buy you for a solution yeah but they don't know how that works. So we have to put those boundaries there. The client doesn't know the boundary. If you go to a dentist, you know the dentist sets the boundaries what he or she can do. Can do, yeah. That's extremely important. That's why you have trust in a dentist. So if a client likes to trust the coach, we have to set really clear boundaries what we can do because then the trust part is stays there. And it's the same for therapy, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, that's really important. And uh what I see now, and I have a feeling about, because I say depression, anxiety becomes more and more, and wellness is a whole mm. topic, and I see more and more coaches stepping in that, because it's, yeah, it's business. And I have, say, my sometimes my doubts about it, because are we really educated as coaches mm. to deal with that? Mm. And when you talk about wellness, wellness is, uh, is a lot of things. Eh? Uh, how you talk about and most times what does not bring health is our own limiting beliefs uh, for, or the things we learned in life mm. really working on limiting beliefs you could question yourself is that something that we as coaches like to do or educated for what we should or shouldn't do and that's also a gray area for me because if you talk about limiting beliefs they they came to us as a great coping mechanism in the past Nowadays, they're not a great coping mechanism or and actually they're hindering us to achieve something. So yes, we could solve them to the future, but do with all respect. We got stung 10 years ago, so we have to do something about, say, the root cause. And yes, and then I talk about three-brain coaching. In three-brain coaching, you can because the heart and the gut, where most times those limiting beliefs are don't know time, so they don't know yesterday. So you can coach them in today to the future. Mm. But it, but that needs some really special things that can stay in our coaching room. Because the moment you ask, what happened 10 years ago, Mel? Mm. And what did your partner say? And what did your boss say? And then actually we step into a therapy role. We go digging into the past. And digging in the past doesn't solve an issue. It just means you're digging in the past. <laughs> so we have to change that role. But the same is wellness. So why do people do what they do? Yeah. Because we want to learn that. To change it, just behavioral-wise is simple, but to change the really the deeper patterns is hard. So I have say also in that part, and I hope that uh, 
Magdalena, uh, de, 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 our CEO from uh, yeah. ICF, uh, creates even more clear boundaries here where we should and shouldn't touch on. Mm. Because I know in her last presentation or the presentation last year, she spoke about, say, the needs that we have as coaches and that, say, one third of the questions are really health or wellness related or anxiety, depression related. And I think now we should, it should be should. It would be wise, in my opinion, to set some boundaries. How do we deal with that as coaches? Where do we like to touch and not touch on? Yeah. And it's, again, all in mind, our client. Eh? Mm. Sorry, for lots, the, sorry for the long explanation. No, no, no. <laughs> lots to think about, lots to discuss about. At the end of the day, as you said, right, is how, how best can we uh, serve our clients? Yeah. And sometimes the best thing to do is to take a break and allow the clients to work with some other professional for a little bit yeah, before they continue Absolutely. the journey yeah, with coaching. So I think what you say is, say, and I said a couple of times, but what you said is so important. Eh? It is the client we have to take, we have to have in mind. And yeah. there's one thing, sometimes we forget that they mm. trust us with their with their behavior, their things, their topics, they trust us. Yeah. So we should take it extremely serious, in my opinion. They trust us with their career, their topics, mm -hmm. their things. So it's not just a game we're yeah. playing so. where we get paid for. I call it a privilege. It's also a, a very critical one because you know, on one side, you know, there is all that trust and relationship rapport building and all that. But on the other side, that could be a, a crutch that they're using yeah? where yeah. they are reliant, you know, over reliant sometimes uh, on, on, yeah. on the coach or whatever the professional help is. And sometimes that can be the danger of it. Yeah, absolutely. I would love to uh, talk about since you are so passionate about the three brains Let's kind of get into that a little bit. How did that come about for you? I would say I'm extremely, I'm extremely passionate about it because it gives many solutions for us coaches to do things that are freaking amazing. Mm. <laughs> and how did I come to it? As I said, I was a became therapist. Now, I don't know how it happens to you, but in my old days and still now, I came aware of clients that we could not help. Yeah, and they have topics and just still normal topics, not about sexual assault or something like that, but still normal topics. And it did not change, although they knew they could change. They wrote down their action plan. And then after one or two weeks, they stopped their action plan. Also like, yeah. what the beep? Yeah. <laughs> Why do you stop? Yes. And we all know it. If it's now just uh, uh, being healthy, uh, eating more, sporting more. And that lead me in the path of now uh, uh, NLP, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I got my own burnout. Uh, I got once a horrible divorce when I moved to Australia. And mm. both of them kicked me down so hard. I also thought, that, hey, I learned already so much. Still, this happens to me. So all I learned and applied to myself doesn't work mm -hmm. enough. What's more? Wow. Being also a therapist and working with people who are serious, say, now, hurt. <clears throat> I always think, can we talk about the subconscious? Your subconscious, no. no. And I always ask uh, dear professor, what is the subconscious? Now, the subconscious is what we don't know. I said, yes, but where's the do don't know located? Where in your head? I don't know. Now, long story <laughs> short, I came aware, uh, also from Michael Gershwin, we have a second brain in our gut. And then you heard about these stories of the heart brain, and I came aware about research about say, heart transplants, that they move also the, the, uh, the memories. And I thought, okay, yes. so if the gut has a brain, the heart has a brain, we have a brain inside our beautiful skull, say that it's all true, let's go from that hypothesis, then what is the reason that they are there and what is their objective and what is happening? And how does it work then for our clients? Now, I have to get all the mix and start to really that is playing and experimenting with my students who have a uh, teaching psychotherapy and hypnotherapy mm -hmm. and with my clients, uh, therapy clients. So if that's true, is it there? Now, and I can where actually this is true. So a lot of things is stored in our heart and gut and just as we actually sometimes forget, time we only know in our head. And mm -hmm. when do people learn time? When do they learn next year, last year, when they're around the age of seven? So before the age of seven, we don't actually know what's yesterday and tomorrow. But before the age of seven, we learn a lot. Just like 
before the age of three, almost nobody has a memory. But what happens in the first three years is extremely important for your life afterwards. Are you secure attached, not secure attached? So where do we remember that? Now, mm. then I can be where the heart and the gut stores. The gut mm. is really your, your me brain. Uh, that is the really uh, the brain that is already 500 million years old. And in my training, a lot of times say, look at the sea cucumber or look at the look at an, uh, an, uh, an and you see it somewhere. It's just a living, a, a living intestine. The heart brain is all about bonding and connection because that's why it also that's the only part besides the amygdala that also secretes oxytocin, the love yeah. hormone. Yeah. And the head, of course, we know by all the research has all the amazing stuff it does. And if you have then those three things, hey, the gut decides about me, myself, and I, action, and those kind of things, the heart about bonding, the head about all logic, then it comes to where why people don't move because their limiting belief or their coping mechanism is somewhere stored long time ago in their heart or gut. Mm. They don't know yesterday, the heart and the gut. So you can coach them in the now, change it in the now for the future, and you solve an issue that happened 10 years ago. It's freaking amazing. So you can coach people actually on things that happened 10 years ago and still do it coaching. And it works amazingly. I just finished the training last week and there were an MCC coach in it and PCC coach in it and another PCC coach, but really highly experienced. So there's a, it was a really small group. And I, when we started, I was like, okay, so we have a doctor in there who studied neuroscience and all kinds of stuff and had more degrees than I could count. An MCC who's already 30 years in the field and a PCC who also actually did trauma and somatic work. I think, okay, this wow. is a challenge. <clears throat> Will my stuff work? <laughs> and I got all, from all three of them amazing uh, sweet responses about their changes they made in the training, yeah, personal, personal development they made. That just was for them something like eye-opening things that they could not expect it happened because one of them even was say walking for some topics by a psychiatrist and solved things the psychiatrist could not solve by yeah. not by me yeah, by actually by one of the other coaches who was just using just using my techniques. <clears throat> so I saw how amazing successful it works. That's why I'm so extremely enthusiastic about it. Yeah. Because in that moment, you can change your questions. And this, of course, when somebody leaves you, where do you feel it? In your heart. Hey, heartbroken. Yeah. Yes, it makes sense. It can really happen. Mm. Yeah, when you're anxious, where do you feel it? In your gut. Hey, how many times do you say, follow your gut feeling? And they're really true. The only thing is, as coaches, we're not educated up to now <clears throat> to really come aware, hey, that means something. But if you say to somebody, why don't you follow your gut? Actually, what you say to a person, do only what's good for you. Don't give an F about anybody else. If you say to your friend, no, just follow your heart in that relationship, you actually say, please, the other, don't take care of yourself. So if you go for the bad boy or bad girl, probably a couple of years, you'll have a, you will be totally heartbroken. Uh, by the way, so and if you say, hey, just follow your head. You actually say, follow what's logical, but mm. you don't follow your passion. So in what we say normally to our friends is actually follow one of the three wisdoms we have. And there's three different responsibilities. Take care of myself, take care of the relationship, take care that's logical. All three of them combined gives us amazing possibilities. Using only one of them yeah. is like walking on one leg and the other leg tied to your, to your butt. That doesn't make sense. Nobody would say that it makes sense actually to walk like this. Can okay, you please untie my other leg so I can walk normally? That would make sense. Yeah. That's why I'm so enthusiastic about it. And I can talk on hours, so I'll just stop. Because... <laughs> but, but it is. Everything you said, right, made a lot of sense everywhere, right? Everywhere. Uh, it, it connected with me. Um, uh, it resonated uh, deeper within me as well to kind of say, am, am I truly serving the things that I'm really desiring? And it's often yeah. the case, I, I noticed that logical people that I work with, uh, engineers, top, top leaders, uh, they, they're yeah. brilliant. Eh? 
brilliant in in what they yeah. do and then the gaps are often misaligned from here and here yeah. that's what i've just noticed right just when you're talking about it it's all coming together i mean of course i i've known this yeah but uh it's just like yeah. a re enforcement of of the missing gut and the missing connectivity with with that heart that we're often just flowing with that one brain and making all decisions based on that and then thinking what what the hell's gone wrong <laughs> you know yeah. yeah you're so right and when i say uh, it is there it, in the i would say in the western world we discovered it, eh? Michael Gershwin in the 90s, uh, Dr. Amour also in the 90s, they wrote the, the books and the research about it. But of, of course, in the Asian culture where you're from, they know it mm. already for thousands of years. <laughs> so it's not something new I'm saying, some, something. The only thing is, in the Western world, eh, what we love in Western world, we scientifically proven it, so now it's yeah. true. <laughs> if you look at Tai Chi, if you, it, it's about the body movement, it's about the whole alignment. If you talk about meditation, but 3,000 years old, it is, it is all there already. Only we totally forgot it, how it works, and we abuse say words for it. But the good thing is now it is now scientifically proven. We can actually use it also much more in the way we do, and it is less now I would all say purple and uh, spiritual because it's just hard science. Mm. But mm. you're so right. Leaders who are brilliant sometimes, yeah. and we we all know them. Sometimes we forget to connect with the rest. That's true. And but also some leaders are extremely good from working from the gut because the gut is a survivor and a winner. I always call them the, uh, the, 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 <laughs> the, 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 the Terminator or whatever. So they are not Schwarzenegger, they're Rambo. They're freaking amazing. It is the gold medal winner who just squeezes the last push out of it to become number one. It's freaking amazing. The only thing is if that's your leadership style, yeah. you can still be extremely good in your company and even your company can be good, but it has a massive turnover. People are just there passing by for their own needs. And when there's no common need anymore, they disappear. So the long-term results are not there. And when you mm. look about the book from good to great. Yeah. So the moment you can help leaders in coming aware, you're doing freaking amazing awesome, period. The only thing is, how sustainable is your team and your yeah. company? Yeah. yeah. And then something like, and then most of them say, yeah, no, I, I know Chris. They go to the no, I know Chris. What should I do about it? At least, uh, it's good if you ask a question and said, uh, how many times do you really ask people what they really just do for life? And a lot mm -hmm. of them say, that's a waste of time, Chris. Then we're not here to talk about life. I said, so do you hire then a person only for the work or do you hire actually the person? Uh, do you hire the skills or do you hire the person? Yeah. And they say, that's a stupid question. I said, it sounds like a stupid question, but you hire the person, but you actually only like the skills. And the pity is they're not separable. You cannot separate those two. Yeah. When you hire the skills, you also hire the person. So it's all his or her things around him. Mm. And I gave recently an, a leader an assignment from to talk to all his 10 direct reports and really sit there for us. I said, okay, take half an hour, not an hour, but I normally say take half an hour. And the only thing you need to ask is when, hey, I actually like to talk about you, uh, wife, kids, and your personal life, where you're coming from. How's life treating you? That's the only thing you can ask, and you don't talk about work. And after two or three sessions, he mailed me back or WhatsApp me back. Chris, this is extremely hard to do. No, do you know? And then the next time he texts me back, actually, I learned a lot about those people. I never knew that now XIZ had was married. I never knew that had kids. Yeah. And he said, by the way, you know, uh, some people responded to me that they actually really liked our, my talk with them. What's wrong with those people? We didn't talk about work and they like it. <laughs> <laughs> but but now, a couple of months later, he says, I see a change in my team. Yeah. They're supporting each other more. Mm. Mm. And he really had something like, how is that possible? Talk? We didn't talk about teamwork or team synergy. We didn't go climbing mountains. We're just for talking about us and people are working more together. How is that possible? Now, and they talk actually about now what we talk. Now, what's for you? Probably you start laughing. So let's go. That hard brain that then starts connecting. Beautiful. And and yeah, you're right. We could talk about this forever, right? Because it's so, <laughs> it's, 
it is it is so meaningful you talk about that example I, i i just came back from overseas and i had the same encounter right with the leaders over there and, and same the question that i asked them is how well do you know your people say so, yeah, I, i do know my people <laughs> really well i do know my people and then, it's the head knowledge right i know that they yeah. are good in their competence uh, in their way uh-huh. they do the work in their uh-huh. deliverables uh? so it's fascinating <laughs> fascinating Yeah. And not just in one culture, it's everywhere. Yeah. And why I think it's because we were born to connect with another person, yeah. another human being. And that is the power of, of everything. You're right. The funny part I spoke with that said that leader and as being a therapist, I said, can I just ask you a question? Said, Without going into the therapist, I'm just curious. Where did you learn to behave like this in your team <laughs> and as a leader? Wow. I said, I said, I said and I'm going to write down the answer, by the way. And he said, how do you mean? I just said, your dad was also this, 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 this. And he said, yeah. I said, is that normal? I said, yes, it's normal. I said, is our mom or our dad who just pushes us in that way wow. or in a relationship together? I said, we're not going there. I said, but what do you need now to get more of that? Eh? So we just play, we, we be almost now, you can call it uh, 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 child healing work or inner child healing or those mm. kinds of stuff, but then in the coaching way. Yes. So. I just proved my three brain coaching. I said, are you willing to work on it in a coaching way? I said, we're not going to do freaking therapy. Please not. <laughs> I said, good. Because if you're going to do therapy, we'll kick you out in two seconds. I said, that's good. I said, I promise you no, no therapy. And in the co- three brain coaching way, I just helped him. And he said, I didn't cry. It was just, you know, the, the joke. Now I didn't cry. I just had to, I, I just uh, choked a little bit. That's why the tr- a tear came out. I said, that's great. It's good that you choked. And, <laughs> I spoke with him later. He said, Chris, I don't know what I said. I don't know what you did with me because I know it was coaching, but there's really wow. a, a load of my shoulders. And I said, actually, I said, and my wife told me I'm I'm becoming softer. I said, Chris, you have to help me. I don't like to become a softy in our marriage. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, how does she like it? I said, actually, she likes it a lot. I said, no, what, what what's the freaking issue? I said, I don't have an issue. Talk. We don't talk about issues. <laughs> Now, he, he said it in a joking way, he said, but it, oh, it was yes. so amazing to hear that actually he learned in his late 50s, yeah. that what he learned when he was five, six, seven years old, he was carrying wisdom now, and that he actually, the only thing he had to learn, that he was now in his end 50s, and he was not six or seven or eight years old anymore. And when his heart learned that, and his gut learned that, it was dropped off. And it was so beautiful wow. to see So that's why I love three brain coaching again, because you can do freaking amazing work in short time. Well, you heard it. You've got to learn more about it. Chris, you have a book about it too. Uh, tell us about that book. Yes, it, it's still a, a relationships book, because I first wrote about we're all in relationships. So it's relationships, which brain is talking. Now, of course, head, heart, or gut. Yeah. And I said, it's about relationships, but we're all in relationships. And the second part of the book is actually How do you deal in a relationship? And it's now now your partner, your spouse, your your colleague or whatever. How can you work with them when they are more dominant in one of the brains? Because most Mm. people are dominant in one of the brains. Mm. How do you deal with that? How do you work with that? And the funny part is everybody who reads it, a lot of people say, I'm hesitant to read it because it's about relationships. But the moment they read it, they say, this is freaking amazing. I say that (laughs) the doctor uh, in all the sense who was in my training, it's like, a book about relationships, why should I read it? She read it and said, this is a freaking amazing, awesome book. Everybody should read this, Chris. I said, I do agree with you. How do I achieve that? <laughs> and so it's there. So, and so it's still my, uh, my my promise. I will write a book that is also much more, say, without relationships, much more for us as coaches, as leaders, okay. how we can work okay. within that part. That's that's somewhere in the in the pen. Yeah. Say, but for all our coaches, eh, us as MCC, but also our PCCs, ACCs, and whatever, yeah. the most important thing is to develop yourself. Mm. And don't stop learning. Mm. And if it's now my training, or you go to you go to UML or to whomever, it doesn't yeah. matter. As long keep on learning, keep on your de- developing yourself. Yeah. That's what I that's what I learned from all my years. <laughs> the moment you think you know, actually come aware that you don't know. Yeah, I like to echo you. That's freaking amazing. <laughs> <laughs> no, totally allowed to know. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yes, it's because we are now MCCs, he would say we are the, the highest in, in, in coaching, but it doesn't mean we have to stop learning. Yeah. Actually, in my opinion, the learning starts now because oh, yeah, now it is how totally. can we actually create, say, what we know to yeah. a level that is adaptable for everybody else and for ourselves Absolutely. and for our clients. Absolutely. I love that. I felt that immediately when I got MCC like three and a <laughs> plus years ago. And I felt <laughs> that um, <laughs> I I didn't know that much, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and you can say it's a mix of, you know, a bit of that limiting yeah. beliefs, a bit of all of that. But I like yeah. to say I've I've come to a point where I realized that I can learn from not just M- another MCC. I can learn from anyone out there. It, it's just being in a posture of being hungry, you know, hungry to learn something every single day. Absolutely. I, I don't know. So I, I have a dog. And. The moment you feel, say, say, um, stressed out, yeah. then start learning from your dog. Because a dog, we could say, is quote unquote lesser intelligent than us, yeah. doesn't get stressed out. That's yeah, it's it, stressed yeah. out maybe for one second or two seconds, and then it shakes it off and says, okay again. Because it lives in the press, it lives in the present. It doesn't yeah. have to do mindfulness, it is mindfulness. <laughs> so we can learn from everything. Because the moment we think, oh, I, I'm MCC, I, I'm good, <laughs> actually, on that moment, you're not good anymore. Because then you yeah. step in the arrogant pit. Yeah. For, for me look around and you can learn from everything it's yeah. if you like to see see resilience look at nature yeah. then you really learn resilience that's true so good um what is your wish for coaching in the days oh. ahead i i know it sounds contradictable almost but that we even become more professional wow we 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 we're, we're grown the last 20 years massively as coaches and yes do us all respect eh? it's still easy to become a coach and actually um now actually that we become as coaches really separated from the people who think they are coach and that we as <laughs> an icf emcc really create there's a difference between us wow. what we do as a profession as a coach and the people now, who became a coach somewhere? I think, you know, I worked 20 years as a sales manager, sales director, yeah. or whatever. So I can also be a coach. Yeah. Because most of them are a mentor or a consultant. But we as coaches take our profession almost to a next level that we are really seen. A professional coach is yeah. something different. Uh, that, that's my wish for us. And uh, for, all the, for all our colleagues who are listening, and uh, Magdalena, from, uh, the, you can put the squeeze on us, on MCCs and all the others, to become even better. Mm. And, and please do so. I, I will not say I always enjoy it on that moment. I can tell you if I ever do new <laughs> recordings. But if we like to become really a true profession, yeah. we have to train. Yeah. Just like in sport, if you stop training, yes. you stop winning. Yeah. And the moment we as coaches stop training, we, besto- we stop becoming a really great coach. Yeah. So that, that's my wish for all of us. That, that's why I said keep developing because when we are a real true profession, we can even bring in much more in the end because that's my idea for our clients. Yeah. Of course, they say, hey, Definitely. because I don't know, when I read the book from good to great, I thought that's what we have. Long-term uh, uh, amazing companies, toxic relationships, toxic leadership is out. Now, the yeah. only way we can do that, if we coaches become even more professional, people say, no, I have a toxic relationship. I know it's not healthy for my company. Please, dear coach, help us. Yeah. And if we really can, vanish that. So that's my wish. Beautiful. I love it's it. Just love small, it love it's just a small one. <laughs> just a small one, as you say. Yeah. And, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to take us a little bit of time. <laughs> Let me say that. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot yeah. of um, commitment, I think, from everyone, not just mm. from one body or just re- relying on the leadership to do their thing. I think it's it's true, even yeah. this, right, this platform. That is why I yeah. guess I created this whole show is yeah. because I wanted <laughs> to showcase the excellence out there and, and bring it in and allow it to continuously impact lives and, and young coaches coming in, especially. To, yeah. to hear that there is that uniqueness that each coach bring, but then there is the responsibility Absolutely. part as well. Responsibility. Absolutely. To, 
because, that professionalism. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you're so right. Because a young coach and an old coach doesn't mean an old coach is better. It just has more experience. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Because when I said, when I started my story 25, 27 years ago, yeah. the person I was coaching was extremely happy with my coaching. Mm. So I was not doing great stuff. Probably now, I assume 27 years later, I do even more amazing stuff. Now, actually, <laughs> it's more stable, the quality. Yeah. I could always say that the quality is more stable than then. Eh? But it doesn't matter if you're one year in the field or 20 years in the field. Right. It only shows you have more experience, but it doesn't mean you're better or worse. Eh? Yeah. So all those young coaches keep developing because we all need you. That's right. Any last thoughts? No. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just I'm really I'm, I'm grateful to have this chat with you and the laugh with you because I, I, I know your passion and your willingness. No, no, no laugh thoughts. I'm saying I'm, I'm happy that we had the opportunity to have this chat and that I really wish that everybody who listens to us think from hey, I learned one or two things or one or two things out in this chat that motivated me. Okay, I know that Mel and Chris also really had a hard time when they went for the MCC. Okay, that's normal. Oh, Mel and Chris also took a break out in between because it's like, this is not for me. <laughs> oh, they also had their limiting beliefs, although they are so good. Yeah. Oh, it's totally normal. It yes. is. In learning, it's in learning, it means you have to fall down. Yeah. Every learning path means you sometimes fall down and sometimes yeah. getting up is hard. That's right. Keep on getting up. Keep on getting up. Yes, keep on. Every single day. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, Christoffel, it has been a pure pleasure for me to to have this chat with you, my friend. Yes, my uh, dear friend, thank you so much. I wish you you a beautiful evening in Melbourne. I'm going to have a beautiful day in the Netherlands. We speak soon in another way. Thank you. This has been the 100 Master Coaches show today with Christoffel and myself, Mel, saying catch you on the next one. Till then, take care. Continue to do what you do best. Coach, coach, coach out there. Take care now. Bye-bye. You have been watching the 100 Master Coaches series with your host, Coach Mel, MCC. Brought to you by Catalyst Coach. www.catalystcoach.live We will be right back with our next Master Coach on the 100 Master Coaches series.